Ted's with us in Orlando. Hey, Ted, your question for Chris. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dave and uh, Chris, for taking my call. It's a pleasure talking to you guys. Sure. Uh, I've been putting the numbers. Uh, I would like to retire in 13 years at 51. According to the RIQ, all I need is $1,600 a month to get me going. For My question is how many years once you put the numbers and the amount that I need to uh, contribute? Okay. How many years would it last? Okay. Now, Ted, one of the things you want to remember is as you start to do this and you start this conversation with yourself or with your spouse on our IQ, is you understand Mm -hmm. that as you're investing, you're going to have, as Dave and I were talking about earlier, the power of compound interest. So the money that you're investing is always going to keep growing for you. All right. And so what you want to do is, again, as you sit down with an endorsed local provider, talk about what's your plan, what's your withdrawal rate, how much are you going to have to live off of? And remember, the one thing we're never going to take into retirement with us is debt. So if you're still paying on a house or if you're doing any of that, remember, you're going to attack that stuff and watch your cost of living drop down. It's going to drastically decrease how much you have to have, which increases the amount of time and the amount of money that you'll have in the long haul. Okay, so you got you you ran the RIQ, Ted, and you have a number that you're going to want at retirement, a big number. What was that number? Correct. I put sixteen uh, hundred a month, and currently I have ninety thousand dollars, and uh, contributing close to a thousand dollars a month. I believe it was somewhere at five or six uh, thousand, uh, six hundred thousand. Right, and then you wanted to, you wanted to withdraw uh, you wanted to withdraw sixteen hundred a month. Correct. Like currently, I get. 12 from the uh, employer, and I'm contributing 15. So I'm following your steps. I have only eight years left in the mortgage. We don't have any other debt. However, my wife loves to work, and she's probably going to work until she's 61. With my past experience, I would love to do more, uh, you know, traveling and helping through church. So all I need is I'm very frugal. All I need is $1,600, buy a brand-new car before I retire at 51. And if I have to give four or five days out of the week, uh, you know, doing volunteer work through church, that's kind of like my dream. And then take care of my wife when she gets home. Kids are going to be grown. So the only thing is I'm having a hard time is if I am uh, if I should be okay with the $1,600, I didn't go too risky. I put only 8% gain. How many years, according to uh, the RIQ, doesn't have that question as how it, many it years. Would, it'll run that? perpetually if you, set, if you set the withdrawal rate and you set the investment Correct. rate and you hit both of those, it'll run forever. That's how it's set right. up. See, see my, my goal was at 51, I have a 457, so I should use the 457 because I don't have to pay the 10% fee before you're uh, 59 exactly. and a half. Exactly. And then if I run out of the 457, it's going to be by then only according to the IQ, 125,000. I'm going to start getting into the Roth and getting the remaining money that I put in. Yeah. And then by then, I'm leaving the 401 all the way, hopefully, by 61, 62. My only concern is, would it be okay, instead of me doing 27% to be in the safe side, to put maybe 37% and uh, not go extremely of pain of the house uh, at a faster pace? No, you need, to, you need to stick at 15% pay and pay off the house. That's what Chris was telling you a minute ago. Yeah, you got to attack that. And the other thing I'm going to encourage him to do, Dave, as he's talking about he wants to travel and do some mission work, he's going to have to revisit how much he's going to have to live on each and every month. And so taking a look at that dollar amount and just realistically understanding what you want to do is start the conversation, get out all your statements, the 401k, 457s, all of those things. Go sit down with the professional that can walk you through the process and help he and his wife get their money on the same page. Yeah. So you know when you're going to use the 457, when you're going to use the 401k. And the trick is the big number that you've got there, the total of those things, if they are earning what you put into the tool, and you're withdrawing what you put into the tool, that that lump of money will last. Even if you're drawing a little bit on the 40, 457 at the start, and then after re- you hit over 59 and a half, you start drawing on the other. It doesn't matter which one you're taking it from because it's still a pile of money that you're drawing against. But again, those uh, investment assumptions that you put in there and those withdrawal assumptions w- are always going to take you to infinity as far as it'll last. You're not going to run out of money is how that thing's set up. We don't want it to where you're trying to take it to zero. I, it, I guess you could manipulate that tool to where you 
withdrew more than the investment amount was, and it would take it. It would eventually drain it. Yeah. Yeah. And so some people have used that as they start to talk about estate planning, Dave, things, money they want to leave to kids or grandkids or whatever it is. But like I said, it's the conversation starter to, for you to start to get intentional with it. And I guarantee Ted, as he starts to look at this and he runs the numbers, he's going to get serious about attacking that house because he's going to realize the mortgage payment that he's making right now, he could be paying himself and his future. Exactly. Very good. Ryan's with us in Colorado Springs. Ryan, your question for Chris Hogan. Hey, hey, Dave and Chris. Uh, my name is Ryan Graham from Colorado Springs. Uh, currently, have no debt uh, besides the house. Uh, we owe two hundred twenty thousand on the house, and our yearly income is about ninety thousand dollars, and with a baby on the way. Now, my company puts up a un, an unmatched fourteen percent retirement for for us. Is that something I should be adding to and and an additional to? I know fifteen percent is kind of the the number. I don't know. Uh, I was just that, kind of they like are putting fourteen percent into what? Into a retirement. What kind of retirement? That's what I don't know. Or I'm need, not very good with the whole. Okay, you need to find out if it's a pension or if it's if they're putting that much into your four hundred one k. My guess is it's a pension. I think that sounds familiar. Yeah. You need to learn about that, number one. Okay. And then your question is what? My question is, is should I be put, putting an additional to that, addition, more than 14% than, than they're, what they're putting away? Absolutely. See, as you sat down and you're looking at this, as you hit baby step number four, you want to make sure that you, yourself, as you sit down, you and your wife and talking about it and you're looking, you understand what they're doing, but you want to stay focused on what you're doing. And especially as your family is expanding here, you got a baby coming on the way. You want to be intentional with this. You want to make sure you're setting your money aside as you look at it. And Dave and I have told people for years, 15%. You want that there in your 401k. And it's you putting in 14% of your or 15% of your money. Perfect. And so if you've got a, you know, you guys sitting down together looking at that, if they're doing that, I want you to know exactly what they're doing for you. Go see HR, go get your benefit specialist, get that packet, go sit down with an ELP and understand exactly what it's being invested in and when and how you can control it. Chris has a bit of a busy fall. Chris Hogan is my guest this half hour, and uh, he and I will be doing the Smart Money Tour together. We'll be in Baton Rouge, in Atlanta, in Nashville, in Oklahoma City, and in Louisville this fall. That's September, October, and November. And uh, he'll be doing his new Retire Inspired event in three cities, Kansas City, in Denver, and in Oklahoma City in November and early December. And uh, he and Rachel, my daughter, Rachel Cruz, will be doing a Smart Money event in Cincinnati in October as well. And Chris and I will be doing the Smart Conference together in Phoenix and in Denver in October. So a little bit of airline miles coming up for you, sir. There, we are going to be all over the place, Dave. But the thing that I love about it is that wherever we go, we're bringing hope. We're bringing real world education to people so they can understand how they can take control of their financial futures and get serious about their results. And that's what I want people to do. I don't want you to listen to the news and don't listen to all the people that tell you you can't. I want you to stay focused and control the things you can control. Your attitude, your outlook, and your output. You can do this. For tickets to those events, DaveRamsey.com or call Customer Care at 888-22-PEACE. 888-227-3223. And I'm holding the advanced reader's copy for Chris's book that's coming out in January. It's not for sale yet, but it's uh, it's going to be a big book, y'all. We're really exciting. The baby is in the house, man. It's good stuff. Thanks for coming by, Chris. Thank you for having me, sir. Good stuff. ChrisHogan360.com, DaveRamsey.com for tickets and info on all that stuff. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Dave Ramsey Show.